Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Royal School of Needlework, BA Honours Hand Embroidery Virtual Open Day. I'm Angie Wyman and I'm course leader for the degree programme and welcome to our Virtual Open Day at Hampton Court Palace. The Royal School of Needlework BA Honours Hand Embroidery course is a specialist three-year full-time course and it's delivered solely by the Royal School of Needlework here at Hampton Court Palace. We were founded in 1872 and we're incredibly proud to have this programme as part of our portfolio. The course is validated by University for the Creative Arts. And this is where you will study. It's the most magnificent place, Hampton Court Palace. Everybody is just enthralled to be here and to be here as a student and to study. And this shows a view from Fountain Court up to our studios, which are on the third floor. And finally, we have a view from your studio. It's the most amazing, inspirational view, and it takes, it changes every day of the week and every month and season throughout the year. So our degree programme, it really is a unique educational experience. And we mix that the, you know, the traditional and the contemporary approaches to hand embroidery. And that is one of the main philosophies of the course that you mix and you learn those traditional hand skills as taught by the Royal School of Needlework since 1872. But then you apply that traditional skill base towards these contemporary approaches and you develop and build your practice as you move through the course. You will learn to research and research hand embroidery, different textile processes, and also to develop your professional practice as you move through the programme. And you learn that through the participation in live projects and external competitions. And we'll explore that as we move through the, the slides. This is a little view, a little sort of movement through our hand embroidery studios. At very fast pace and a little view out of the window, just as a nice little taster for you. Really, the programme is about allowing and enabling you to discover yourself through stitch. Every single one of you will learn the same traditional skill set of stitches, but how you apply those stitches and how you develop them through to your own creative practice is unique and individual to every one of you. It's like your own personal DNA of stitch. You'll develop new ways of working. I think that is really important to, um, to understand as part of a degree programme that you will be challenged in terms of your processes. You'll, you'll be encouraged to explore new ways of working because that is what allows you to develop your creative practice. Again, exploring new approaches to design and that very much comes from the projects that we, um, we deliver through the programme so that it's project led and the design process enables you to apply problem solving through drawing, painting, design development and making. Art and design informs your practice and that's hugely important because that is what makes original and innovative hand embroidery and you'll see here um, we've got Bethany Duffy who's really successful practitioner developing um, embroidered portraits um, through her own creative business. And then we have Nikki here, who is a full-time freelancing, full-time embroiderer for Ralph and Russo. And learning through making, that's hugely important. And that's part of the philosophy of the program that you learn through that making process. You understand the vocabulary of making and the vocabulary of hand embroidery. We're hugely proud to offer you dedicated studio spaces um, and that really allows you to be a creative practitioner. Um, with no hot seating here, everybody has their own studio space and you know that changes daily as your project evolves, you know, it's like a little sort of creative space to develop your practice. In terms of opportunities, all of our applicants are interviewed with their portfolio of work. So if you apply to us, you will be interviewed. Obviously at this 
current time and climate, these interviews will take place digitally, um, but you will be interviewed with your portfolio. We also are hugely proud to offer bursaries um, to our students and students are eligible to apply for those bursaries um, once they've enrolled onto the degree programme. So now we move on to your portfolio, which is an important um, consideration when you're applying to a degree programme here. Your portfolio really should include an edited selection of your best work. And I mean edited is hugely important because that helps you to apply skills of critical analysis to your portfolio and you're making sure that you bring your best work to this um, meeting. We want to see evidence of visual research and that can be really wide ranging. Looking at drawing and a wide range of drawing processes from primary and secondary sources. And that really shows how you start that creative journey. We want to see how you explore your research through design sheets, through sketchbooks, developing maquettes, you know, all those lovely sort of processes that really show how you've developed your ideas. And then fourth, you know, moving then through to sort of practical exploration. It may include textiles and it may include embroidery. It doesn't necessarily have to have masses of embroidery in order for your, you to present your portfolio to us. Because, you know, remember, we will be teaching you hand embroidery from day one of the course. Your sketchbooks are really important because they help to convey to us how you develop your research methods and your critical thinking skills how you develop your work maybe through essays and contextual research, that also is really important because that forms a hugely, um, a large part of the programme. Um, probably 25% of the course is the theory and writing about your practice. These are all hugely important components of your portfolio. This gives you, this diagram sort of outlines the academic year and the structure of the course. It's based around units and units are blocks of study time which have set numbers of weeks and credits and also titles and aims and objectives. So you'll see from the items that are coloured here, these blocks that run through the academic year that you work in first year on four units. Those units are divided between research and experimentation, hand embroidery practice, and then you will see the lilac band of block of colour, and that is your technical hand embroidery. That runs throughout the whole of the first year, and that is the equivalent of one day per week. Your hand embroidery context in context, that again is your theory, and that runs for one day a week. The other two units um, run across the first term and across the second and the third terms. That's really where you start to develop your art and design practice. And then you apply your learning through various projects towards your hand embroidery practice. And you'll see as we move through into second year and third year, um, you explore live projects and then in finally in third year you actually put together a research proposal that leads you through to the culmination of the three years of the course which is your final major project. This gives you an idea of that balance between the course structure for year one and you'll see that all of these units are equally weighted. There's four units and they are each equivalent to 30 credits and they all interlink because what you learn in terms of your research and experimentation informs your hand embroidery. Your technical hand embroidery is connected through your practice, but also through your theory, because you learn about hand embroidery in context, you learn about the subject and how it formed such an important part of both our history and our everyday. We have a number of resources here on site and that really helps you to build those sort of extra layers of expertise and also really take your embroidery from the frame through to an outcome. 
And that is based around, we have a textile resource room for pattern cutting and also very detailed specialist hand embroidery equipment that is of a professional industrial a professional standard. We have heat transfer presses, sewing machines, and also the most amazing on-site art and design library, which is where I'm with you today. Our IT suite has Macs, PCs, and all of the software that you need to develop both the digital work that runs very importantly alongside your hand embroidery practice. Here we have our new some examples of our new first years. They're working on a project called Flora. And you'll see here that they've taken their work, not just from a drawn image, but now starting to move it through into three-dimensional paper sculpture. This is a really important part of their learning because they're, they're starting to experience how they can take their drawings from the page through into something that is more material based. And this will then progress through to them actually starting to work with embroidery onto fabric and fabric manipulation to create design developments all based from their theme. You will see here a little fashion shoot that we ran earlier in the week where the students worked on individual mannequins and then developed their own responses to flora. Some little quotes here from our students that I think would really sort of resonate with you as viewers today that, you know, we are only one of 21st years selected for the course internationally. And I think that's a really important factor that we only take up to 20 students per year. And that is for the reason that we are teaching the hand embroidery to the standard of the Royal School of Needlework. And we are very proud of the way we teach and the methodology and the pedagogy of our teaching. And that actually small groups of students learn very well together as a peer learning experience, but also you have a very high staff student ratio. So the teaching is fundamental to your learning on this degree programme. Some top tips from some of our recent graduates. Be experimental. Do not be afraid to try, try something different, especially if you are unsure on how to do it. Read a book or ask. Well, I think that's, that really says it all, doesn't it? That it is about being experimental and about not being afraid to try something different because this is start of a really important creative journey for you. And you're there to be open to new new ways of working, new materials, and that really helps to build you as a creative practitioner because it helps to shape the way that your work evolves as you move through the programme. Jess Vale, the whole point of a degree is to help you to develop. And so if you don't feel confident in an area, that's good. And I think that really is about that the staff are very supportive. They'll support you and to move into new ways of working and new ways of thinking. You know, it's impossible to be good at everything and it just means that you'll find different ways to grow. And I think that journey again, as you move through processes that you start to find different ways of practicing that, um, that you feel a part of you and that really help to shape your creative identity. Here we have a lovely joyful image that is the celebration at the end of a first year and you know really looking at the images that are on the walls looking at the work that's on the tables you really see how you grow from that first day when you embark on your journey with us to the amount that you actually learn across that first year you know these students have maybe come in with very little experience of working with hand embroidery but suddenly they've developed this amazing skill set that moves not just from the frames, but also into applying their hand embroidery practice towards a, a set of outcomes, but also starting to develop their digital skills as well. So they're starting to develop their drawings through into Photoshop and using that as a means of expressing their design portfolios. 
information here that you can get straight from the UCA website in terms of tuition fees for 2020 entry. And I would suggest that you actually go straight onto the UCA website to actually get all of that information with regard to that. International and EU students, we welcome international students from all countries. And just really as a note to say that from January 2021, um, EU students will now count as international students. So you will need to check the new regulations that come in from January 2021. We celebrate the end of every year um, with an awards evening. And that is a really lovely shared time where we all get together and we have invited guests. You will see here Patrick Grant from the Great British Sewing, Sewing Bee, who was one of our invited guests um, at our awards evening in 2019. And I've put this slide up because actually what I want to do is then show you how our awards evening was took place actually in 2020. It took place virtually, just as we are today. And we had an amazing evening where it gave us chance to meet and see each other and really just share the good practices and the amazing outcomes of our students across all year groups. So we really hope that our awards evening for next academic year um, will be able to take place in person and on site. You'll see here graduation. You graduate as a UCA student and you'll see here some lovely shots of graduation and some of them UCA um, ambassadors, Dame Sandra Rhodes and Professor Magdalena Odundo. Our degree shows take place initially at Hampton Court Palace and we transform our rooms and our studio spaces into exhibition spaces. And our students are able to showcase their final outcomes and also to meet industry professionals and industry mentors. You can see here the actual range and the diversity of outcomes that have grown from those little frames and those stitches. As the students have moved through the course, they've actually started to really develop their, um, the context for their practice. So they're really starting to make decisions about how they work, where they work, and the choice of materials they choose to work with. This really is their launch pad. And we don't see it necessarily as the end of the, the course, but actually as the start of their career. We move then from our graduate show at Hampton Court Palace through to new designers. And as one of our third year said this morning, this was a, an image from the time when we could all get together. And yes, this was new designers when we could all share and celebrate the three years of our programme. We'll now move on to looking at some of the graduate successes and some of the external collaborations that we are hugely proud of and that really helped to shape the programme here at the Royal School of Needlework. And I think really that sets it apart from any other course that I know of. We're hugely proud to collaborate with a number of professional, industry professionals, and such a diverse range of professionals make, working from couture, through to um, galleries, through to interiors, through to festivals and through to film. You know, you really start to understand as you study with us on the course, the diversity and how diverse hand embroidery can be. This shows a second year project where we worked in conjunction with the local gallery at the University of Kingston. This is the Stanley Picker Gallery and the project was based around Hanbok which is a traditional Korean pro, um, wedding celebration. We were hugely proud to welcome um, a Korean embroidery artist to Royal School of Needlework. And she was very, very kindly um, helped our students with a workshop to learn these traditional Korean hand embroidery stitches. 
We also have regular um, visits from um, different celebrities and different artists. And here we have Daniel Lismore, who is an amazing ambassador for us here at the Royal School of Needlework. And you may have seen my recent Instagram on um, interview with Daniel on the Royal School of Needlework Instagram page. He's hugely supportive of us and the work that we do. And you'll see as we move through this lovely shot of our students working in the studio. And what's really lovely is that today with us, we have three of our third year students who are actually in this shot here. So we welcome Holly, we welcome Erin and we welcome Lucy. So hello to you all. If one of you, if Holly, would you like to unmute and then we can just maybe tell us a little bit about this project and the way that you were working. Hi, um, so this is the project we did with Stephen Wright. Uh, we went to the House of Dreams, which is like an eclectic mix of all the things that Stephen's collected and curated throughout his life, from people who have come and people who have passed. So for this project, we started by really being very experimental and we made our own shrines and then we hand painted from the shrines. So we were very cautious about what colours we were using and we created a lot of our work just through being really free and different. And from those then I eventually worked on to um, hand painting into fabric and crochet and I made a doll out of those things that I weighted and stuffed using embroidery, using paint, using a load of different techniques all taught by Stephen himself, yeah. Can we move to Lucy? Lucy, if you can just um, join us. Thank yeah, you. Hello. Lucy, how do you feel that actually changed your practice at that point in the, in the, in the year? Because I think at that point you've done, we'd done a lot of very specific technical hand embroidery that was very, there is a right or a wrong. And then Stephen came in and changed everything. And it was like, doesn't matter if you don't want to do that, throw some paint at the wall and go for it. And it kind of, it opens your mind into actually there, are, it's not just, I need to get good marks and technical stitch. It's then I can do whatever I want. I can be whoever I want and I can create whatever I want. And you can go down any artistic path, outsider art, or you can do fashion or film or anything. Like it, it opens up so many doors. And I think Stephen really helped everyone kind of just free everything up. And I think that our practice in third year is now very different than what it would have been because it's allowed everyone to realize that you can be whatever you want to be. And then our portfolios, I think, definitely do reflect that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think it changed your view in terms of how hand, hand embroidery can be sort of um, used or the actual context of hand embroidery? Yeah, I think that because you learn it on a very small, tiny little scale and it's, this is how you do it and this is how you're meant to stitch this certain piece. And then you have this artist who comes in who goes, no, actually blow all those rules out of the water and do what you want to do. And I think it gives you a whole new context for your own practice. And then it means that you, you learn the rules and then you break the rules. And so you can, but you have to know them to be able to break them. I think that's very wise words. Erin, can I just join, just, you could join us, Erin. Hi. Hi, because I know your work for third year now, you're moving into sort of really large scale sort of wall pieces. And, you know, looking at, um, at this sort of project and this image today, it really sort of, look, you know, look, and looking at the work that you're producing now, it really sort of resonates. Yeah, um, I think it was... Doing this workshop, I didn't like it I'm not I'm not gonna lie and I didn't know what I was doing but looking back at it now I think if I didn't do it I wouldn't be doing what I was doing in third year like it it's really helped me like I, I've become a lot more free with my work working like on a really big scale like what Lucy was saying we work on a really small scale so this workshop helped us all become like really free with our work and just paint whatever we wanted to use like different mark makings, use big brushes, use small brushes, use your hands. Like it just made us become really, really, really free. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like now what I'm doing with my third year, working on a really big scale and using different colors. Yeah, I guess this workshop has actually really helped. Like even if I didn't like it, 
sometimes you've got to do things that you don't like and sometimes you will use them and it's a skill that I'll use now for the rest of my life I guess so it's really Thank you, Erin. That's great. I think that really sort of goes back to some of the quotes from some of our recent graduates as well, isn't it? That, you know, that it is an adventure and that you will all sort of go on this, you know, you, you, you go on this journey with us. And that really is about sort of exposing you to new processes and new techniques. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We'll move, we'll move forward, but we'll come back to you for some Q&A later. Thank you. In terms of also um, live, you know, live projects and collaborations, this is one that we worked on a number of years ago, but I think it's really important um, statement in terms of actually showing how hand embroidery can move into new materials and very different materials. Here we have a collection for Hussein Shalayan, and you will see that the embellishment is not conventional thread. The embellishment for this piece is actually hand drilled artificial nails, and they have been used like sequins. So it's ostensibly the same process of stitching the sequins onto the surface, but th this time that surface is artificial nails onto silk organza, and they look absolutely stunning. The Great Britain campaign was an amazing project for us to be involved with here at the RSN and it grew, it took shape and it became this amazing dress that we sort of sort of took over our lives for quite a number of weeks here and we were invited by Nicholas Oakwell Couture to help to create an embroidered dress which was really going to showcase that fashion is great. And the Great Britain campaign was to showcase the best of British creativity. And the dress was designed as for the muse for the model Erin O'Connor. And you will see here as we move through that we worked on this as a collective project. And this way of working is something that is fundamental to the RSN. And, you know, you could look at this photograph here, this image of embroiderers working around a frame and really, you know, look at images from our, at the very start of our um, sort of school and actually see this same process, this same philosophy of collective working. And students and staff um, from different year groups, different discipline, you know, different courses, we all work together. Some of our graduates came back to work with us and we hand stitched tiny fronds of ostrich feathers onto silk organza. And the brief was to create a, a degradé effect which shaded from bright red through to black. So we had 18 bags of ostrich feathers in the department and they were carefully sorted and selected and hand stitched onto the frames. You'll see on the bottom left of your screens, one of the students actually underneath the frame and we had to take it in turns to stitch underneath the frame because the actual width of the frame was too wide for us to reach across without damaging the surface of the feathers. And, you know, we worked through the night and we worked through weekends as well. So this really was as live as you can get in terms of actually working on site with a collaborative project. We also invite um, projects um, to actually start to maybe explore um, elements from our handling collection um, and they may then go on to inspire the type of embroidery that a designer might want to go on to use. And here we have Patrick Grant and his team from eTorts who approached us to work collaboratively for a project for menswear. This was the pieces. They were a collection of biker jackets and jackets and waistcoats and shirts. And they were based around the theme of the Rake's progress. And the di designer's concept was that these pieces would gradually start to look, to start in the initial um, collection to be very smart and very neat. But as the collection moved through, they would start to unravel and become much more disheveled. 
So we have here designs for a biker jacket that combines not just imagery, but it combines text. And that was all hand embroidered onto the form. And this was the outcome. So it's hugely um, influential and managed to get onto the front page of Menswear Insider. And you will see here how the graffiti-like embroidery has traveled all over the surface of that particular collection. Again, working with eTorts back in 2019 and 2020, um, working on embroidered sweatshirts, and then the Give Me a Future collection, which was based around sort of um, banners, union banners, and looking at the whole textile culture from the northwest of England. We then worked with Patrick again in 2020, and you'll see the images of students working in the studio. That was um, a workshop with Celia Pym, which was an amazing workshop, which looked at darning as creative practice, but also how darning can be used as a really sort of strong statement in terms of sustainability and in terms of actually sort of making a statement in terms of how you work with materials and that you don't actually dispose of items, that they don't go to landfill. This aligned perfectly with the collection from Patrick Grant and E. Torts, where the denim garments that we worked on would have been destined for landfill had they not been used for this project. And you will see that all of the items in the collection have been hand darned and patched. Here we have um, collections from Jasper Conran that students have worked on. And also moving through into some of our graduate collections here. Abigail Narona, who graduated with us very recently, within six weeks of graduating, she and her fellow student, Charlie Ellis, set up in business and were successfully um, awarded a Kickstarter campaign and have now developed two collections since they graduated. This was their launch in a, in a London gallery. Here we have Dev Patel, one of our recent graduates with Patrick at an awards evening. And Dev really worked on a strong sort of sportswear theme that really built from his cultural heritage and also sort of fabrics that have been passed down through his family as well. He's using traditional gold work techniques here, but the actual materials that he's working with are contemporary and have sort of a different sort of flavor, a different edge to them in terms of the way that they've been applied to the fabric and the fabric surface. Laura Baverstock, Laura here working with us for her final collection. She then moved through into working in film and as did Hattie McGill, both of them really successful embroiderers for film. Hattie here working on a little piece of silk shading and raised work. And a piece that she worked on as while well, she was a student and what it was a recent graduate, which was hand embroidery for the film Doctor Strange. And you'll see the embroidery on the back of the collar of the piece. But also it's in, important to note that that the, she had to embroider about 20 different collars because these capes are nothing is filmed in sequence and so the editing process needs to look seamless as you move from the start to finish. Embroidery for film as I've just mentioned is important because when you film in HD the garments need to look authentic and they need to have integrity. And you'll see here a number of um, highly successful films that features work by RSN alumni. Again, working freelance for Haute Couture, an important sort of part of that portfolio career of a hand embroiderer. And the examples that we have here that are from Alexander McQueen and Ralph and Russo are also examples that showcase work that where RSN alumni have been involved with. 
we work on large projects. We also work on very small projects, but that doesn't mean to say that they're not equally important. This was a project for Liberty and also the V&A, and it was a doll's house project. And the, the brief was to recreate a room from the Liberty archive that was 30 centimeters square. Our brief from Liberty was to actually help them to recreate some of the interior furnishings of the room. And as you look at the little tiny doll's house interior, you'll see that each of the armchairs has a tiny cushion and there's a little tiny needlepoint rug on the center of the floor. So they were all to scale and we worked with the archivists um, to actually develop designs that were true to the Liberty Design Archive. So the topiary comes directly from a Liberty Archive piece and also the grapes that are embellished onto the surface of the rug. And the little cushion is probably about the size of a matchbox, which gives you an idea of how small the stitches and the thread the fineness of the thread to actually articulate the detail for that particular design piece. Our projects also work across some move into gallery based installation and we've worked with the artist Susan Aldworth twice now and they've both been very different projects equally exciting and really showcasing how you can work with hand embroidery within that gallery setting. The theme out of the blue um, was based around epilepsy and Susan had interviewed a number of um, people who, who live with epilepsy and she wanted to document their testimonials and showcase how they live with epilepsy. So the project used um, Victorian nightwear, nightgowns, and our students became involved with this through their hand embroidery to embroider the testimonials of each of the people who were involved with the project. And the thread that they used was actually ultraviolet. So it glows in an ultraviolet light. And you will see here the same items, but showcased through a normal gallery lighting and also through the UV light. These were actually, these moved, they're on like a little traction. So they moved at certain points as well through the gallery setting. Jasmine is one of our recent graduates and we're also really proud that Jasmine now works with us as a hand embroidery technician. And you'll see here that her hand embroidery moved into interiors, but it features a range of different materials and substrates, working from felt through to leather, through to linen, and also through to working with embroidery onto wooden surfaces also. Alex, her gold work collection was based on iconography and also aligning that with her fear of spiders. So these amazing headpieces that showcase the, her arachnophobia mixed with her gold work. Livia Papiernik really sort of built stories into her practice and her family and her family stories and family history featured into the pieces that she created. And you'll see here, based on family photographs, they were hand-stitched to create beautiful textiles and garments that told her family story. Beth worked with monochrome, so really looking at how you can explore working with black and white and how that becomes hugely sort of elegant in terms of this evening wear collection. We see Jaspreet here working with gold work, working with garments, working with three-dimensional embroidery, all based around her architectural drawings. Lizzie really wanted to showcase her family history again and her family tartan. So she researched into that and worked with um, tailors in Edinburgh to actually build and to create the most beautiful menswear suit and this was some of the accessories that she created alongside that. Lizzie has just completed her MA in menswear from the University of Westminster. Elliot wanted to take his work into fun fashion 
And in, to, in order to do that, he needed to collaborate and he collaborated with a shoemaking company and they worked with him to help to put his embroidery onto these most amazing collection of footwear. And they were featured in Italian Vogue, they were featured in Lucy magazine, and they really have you know, been absolute showstoppers whenever they've been featured through editorial. Eleanor Thornton, you'll see these pieces here. Eleanor was a finalist and a winner of the Hand and Lock Prize, the International Hand Embroidery Competition. So our graduates gain successes both throughout the course and as graduates forging their new careers. We're lucky enough to work alongside a number of makers and number of high industry professionals. This was a project working with Burberry as part of a project called Maker's House. And this was a transformation of the Foils bookshop um, in London. And this was a way of actually showcasing the making and everything that goes be on behind the scenes in order to put forward their collection. And you'll see here Royal School of Needlework degree students working on hand embroidery as this whole event was open to the public. So they were working in rotors, they were working together and also really showcasing their work and answering questions from the public as they stitch. And as we move through, this was probably one of the, the biggest projects that we worked on in terms of its ambition and also how you actually take on a project and work with new materials. We were approached by the Embroiderers Guild and HBO to help them to create a stunning piece of embroidery, which would launch series five on DVD of Game of Thrones. And the brief was to create a white walker so in terms of our input to this project, um, we created everything from the neck down of the White Walker himself and the Royal School of Needlework studio embroidered the most beautiful sort of medallions that were featured in all four corners of the final panel. The students had to work to create and prepare their own fabrics. There's no blueprint to create a White Walker. And you'll see here, they're starting to use spray paints, mixed media. They're starting to break down the surface of fabrics. And this is all part of that creative journey in order for them to create the final piece. We had to build the White Walker as a template, as a, as a, as, as a sort of structure, and then apply the embroidery onto that. So you can see each of the stitched pieces of fabric that were applied onto the embroidery surface. And again, the final piece, he had light up eyes. And just as a point to note, the um, moths and the dragonflies on the image were actually hand embroidered by Michelle Carragher who was the principal costume embroiderer for Game of Thrones. So again, a really lovely sort of um, connection with the series and also really showcasing embroidery to its best. As we move through to the end of the presentation, I think it would be really good to actually just really sort of whet your appetite a little bit in terms of, you know, you've maybe looked at all of the different projects that we've been involved with and we have a range of day and evening classes here at the Royal School of Needlework so you know they're very much technique focused but such a diverse range of projects that you can get involved with so you know if you do want to join us on a day class or an evening class then head over to our website and you can sign up. We also have a range of online collection talks and Amy Hare, who is our senior lecturer in contextual studies here on the degree program, is running a whole series of talks that you can join, as is Dr. Susan K. Williams, our chief executive and curator. So they're all on our website and it would be fantastic if you could join us. Please follow us on Instagram and, we, and if you want to ask any more questions as a result of the presentation today, then please contact us at the Royal School of Needlework 
and we'll be only too happy to join you and to answer those questions for you. So from myself, Angie Wyman, what we're now going to do is we're gonna sort of move over into the question and answer part of the presentation. Um, so I'm going to invite Brina Black, who is our marketing manager, to join me. And I'm just gonna stop sharing the screen as we, as we move through to the questions, Brina. Yes, we've received some questions coming through. Uh, some of them I've answered at the time. Hello, everybody. Okay. Um, and some of them, uh, I think, are a bit more relevant to sort of everybody. So um, I just have held those ones back. So as Angie says, it is very much an adventure um, on the RSM degree program. Um, so one question that has come through is about combining fashion and embroidery. I'm very interested in combining fashion and embroidery. Um, would I be able to create full garments during the class time. And then that same, a, a sort of a link question to that, I don't know if it's from the same person, another question which links with fashion, do you have availability to patterns and other fashion equipment? Yes, um, I think really just to sort of think about that journey as you move from first year through to third year. And the third year really is that sort of synthesis of all of your learning throughout the course. And so, you know, as you move into that point of your, you know, sort of education, that you actually start to write your own project proposal. So at that point, it is about creating a collection. And, you know, we have staff here, we have pattern cutting, our technicians um, are trained pattern cutters. So they will work with the students to actually um, sort of envisage that collection, but pattern cutting isn't caught, taught as a formal component of the course so it's just really working out that balance you know hand embroidery is your degree but you can use garments to actually sort of showcase the embroidery of your collection exactly and we could very much see this um during the presentation in the photos of uh the the last um end of year degree show really that mm. several students um have have created fashion pieces in the past so i think it's really just getting that balance and really sort of seeing the fashion as the vehicle for the embroidery you know yeah okay thank you and sasha asks how many days do you need to be at hampton court palace um, it's yes, a it's a, course, it? yes, it is a full time course. So we, we encourage everybody to be with us for at least four, four, to, four to five days a week. You know, we're open five days a week. So, you know, it is a full time course. It's a busy course. Um, you know, embroidery is very detailed and it's very involved. And, you know, it's also part of, you know, immersing yourself in this amazing space that we have here you know as you saw from just the second slide in you know it really isn't a conventional campus and it's the most inspiring place to be <laughs> thank you um so rebecca says that she attended a virtual open day back in july or june time and that there was um at the time there was talk about the interviews taking place in february 2001 she's mm -hmm. just wondering is that changing due to the COVID at the moment or will the interview still be in February? In interviews will still be take, taking place in February, but as I mentioned earlier, they will actually be online, but we will still be interviewing every applicant to the course. And, and also you will be looking at their portfolio, won't you? Yes, yes. So it is, it is very much a portfolio interview and UCA will be um, sending out information about that interview process, but I can assure you, you will be interviewed. Okay, and we've had a couple of students uh, or people who are watching today uh, who have asked, is there a maximum age limit? No, no. the only minimum age limit is 18. To come <laughs> There's no maximum. So I'm just looking at some other questions that have come through. When is the deadline for applications, please? The, if all of the information about admissions to the programme is um, available on the UCA website and the admission, the application deadline is normally about middle of December, middle of January. Great. And also if you, if you go on to UCAS, UCAS, then UCAS will actually give you all of the application procedure for the course as well. Yes, because it's important to note for those international people watching that you apply through a UCAS system, um, yeah. not to the RSM. 
So on that note, we have Emily, who's in the US. I'm from the US and I understand that the visa process is a bit difficult in the UK. Can you shed some light on what that process would be like for the BA programme? So do yeah. those people go to U, um, UCA about this? Yes, the, um, what I would suggest is that UCA have an international office and they have staff who will, um, who will um, advise you in terms of the application process. Um, so um, if you go on to the admissions team at UCA, then they will um, send that information through to you. OK, thank you. And on average, how many applicants do you receive per year and what are the admission rates like? Because it is quite a conservatoire type of course. Yes, I mean, the because obviously we only take we only take up to 20 students per year um, we probably have, you know, between two and three, two or three times that many applicants. Yes, yes. And back to a fashion uh, related question. How big of a focus is fashion and couture within the course? Where do students typically tend to focus or aim to explore and to be working in, in what kind of environment, I guess? Yeah. Okay, so if we, if we start from the course itself, that because we teach through project, the projects are sort of geared in that sense to enable the students to experience a range of potential outcomes and outputs. So it's, it's fashion is part of that, that sort of project brief, um, but also equally, you may be working on projects for interiors or for galleries. Um, mm. so, so that we really do try to balance that across the program where we can so that you gain an um, sort of experience of working across a variety of different outputs and contexts. Yes. Um, and then that really helps you to define where you see your work um, moving to in terms of third year. And it's not something that suddenly happens. It's something that actually happens incrementally um, through, you, through your own individual learning and through you starting to find where you feel that your practice fits best. Yes, and also at the beginning of a course, you can feel that fashion might be your thing, but by after year two, you might have changed, uh, changed your opinion because of other experiences that you've had during the course. So it's, Absolutely. it's good to be open-minded, isn't it? And I think also really, you know, just being um, sort of, you know, sort of pragmatic that actually, you know, that as designers, there is a the plurality to our practice. So yes. it's not so fixed that you only ever do fashion, that mm -hmm. as an embroidery, your skills and your skill set, you know, you can transfer that across any sort of context. So you may find that as a freelance embroidery, you work across a range of different outcomes. Yes. And um, the next couple of questions are a bit more practical, I suppose. What accommodation is available? Okay, so um, I'd be good to have maybe brought Holly and um, Erin and Lucy in at some point because um, if, if one of you wants to field this question about accommodation. Um, so there's a range of different accommodation that you can go for. UCA have their own kind of set up accommodations so there's some in Epsom and I think that's where people who want to stay in halls live. Me and Holly both live in Kingston in Quebec and Quebec has a student accommodation which is set up as a private halls and there's a few of those in Kingston which is literally 15 minutes away on a bus which is in the transport links are amazing you can get into in central London in about 25 minutes and um, then you, there's like house shares that you can get as well as loads of different options and I think if you contact the university on the email that was on the presentation then they can definitely link you to some different accommodation but um, I've yeah, me and Holly have both lived in Kingston now three years and it's yeah, I can't recommend it enough. It's a beautiful, beautiful town and it's it feels very safe. And the I mean, the nightlife, there isn't a lot of nightlife now because of COVID and everything. But before it, it was there's everything you could possibly want. There's every shop you can possibly imagine. There's fabrics, threads. Yeah, everything that you could possibly ever want from an accommodation in Kingston. Yeah. Thanks, Lucy. I think it's worth just saying as well that you that Lucy is a uni buddy, so um, she's a UCA uni buddy. So if there are any questions in terms of that student experience, then then Lucy is more than happy to be part of that um, answering support network for you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. Um, 
I've got a couple of questions that I can combine here regarding portfolio. And again, um, Angie, you might want to address them to uh, the students um, that we have on the call. Uh, Justy says, how do you best suggest we create and start a portfolio? I have a scientific background, but embroidery has always been a hobby that I have self-learned. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else, uh, Hansa, uh, Hansa, thank you for your question, um, says, for the portfolio, do you need a mix of drawing and stitching, hyphen sewing, or is it solely embroidery work? So you can maybe field those to this degree to our students as well who might want to answer what they did. Absolutely, thanks, Brina. Um, I think the portfolio is is a hugely important part because it, and it can feel quite daunting. Um, if you haven't got a portfolio, then it's it's useful to maybe go on some little portfolio development courses or to maybe consider um, a little part-time art and design course or a foundation course so that you have something to actually enable you to prepare your portfolio and really understand that connection between your art and design practice and your potential career within embroidery um, because it does form a huge part of the program that you know you draw you design you make and you stitch you know, and so that they're all these really important components. And I think maybe sort of talking to the students and getting some feedback from from Erin and Lucy and Holly, but you know, the we have a range of diverse portfolios um, when students come onto the programme. Not everyone's done a lot of embroidery, but I'd rather really want to see drawing and how you develop that creative process. I want to see how you take an idea and you've developed that through to some form of output. It might be completed or it might still be a work in progress, but it still is hugely important to see that creative journey. Would any of you like to sort of talk through Holly or Lucy or Erin about the things that you brought to interview, if you can remember? <laughs> I can. <laughs> He's going to go first. Yeah, I'm going to go. Um, well, I think it's uh, so I did interactive media before I came to the RSN. So I did Photoshop animation and different software designs using Procreate. So I was able to bring quite a few digitally rendered things that I had mm -hmm. done. I also out of maybe the 10 different projects I'd worked on, I brought only four that were embroidery based, heavily embroidery based. But despite that, I'm still here on the course. And it does help you to show the, the, the range of which you work. And also, if you think about how many people are applying, you want to show that you're different and that you can bring something extra to the course. You have a background in something that isn't necessarily embroidery that you think will definitely coincide well with embroidery. So the, some of the digitally rendered things that I had done, I worked into with Stitch. So that's, that's always an avenue to go down, especially with... The, the scientific aspect that the person mm -hmm. really has experience with. So, um, so Erin, had you done a foundation course before you came to us? Um, so I was at college and I did a BTEC level three in fashion. Um, mm -hmm. So I was making clothes. I designed a jacket and made a children's wear jacket. And I did like little felt patches and they were embroidered as well. So I've always been interested in stitching and like knitting and crochet. So that was a lot of my portfolio and a lot of drawing was in it. I also had little bits of Photoshop, but yeah, a lot of drawing. Um, and I like to use like unusual materials when stitching. So there was a lot of that in there. I was upcycling materials and things like that. I think it's just trying to showcase like what Holly said, how you're different to somebody else. Um, just really showing yourself off, I guess. Um, but yeah, like the one person's asked about their scientific background, like just showcase that through your stitching and drawing, like just, yeah, use that as inspiration, I think. I think that would make the most amazing project actually working with mixing art and science and embroidery and science, you know, the two go hand in hand. So really sort of showcase those two skills. Lucy, would you like to just sort of jump in there? So that's... Yeah, so um, before I came to the RSN, I did a level three extended to Cambridge, I think it was diploma or something, in um, art and design. So I did 18 different, completely like different projects. So and, and I, I, I can't even remember if I actually had any embroidery. I think mine was very, so I did photography, fine art printmaking, and I did 
like just a massive range of stuff. Like I made a skirt out of PVA glue and it was just kind of, I think it's more conceptual. It's like, this is my idea and this is how I achieved it. And here's the process that I did to achieve that final outcome. And I did, I did all sorts, like a UV portraiture, like I did all sorts, but I, and the actual embroidery itself, I did a, I made a corset in a Victorian garment and I did a little bit of embroidery on the back, but there wasn't a lot of actual hand embroidery because I knew I wanted to learn the embroidery on the course. And I think it's not, I kind of knew that you didn't want a, like, I already know how to do cruel work, black work, gold work. Like, is, that's what you're here to do. You're not here to, you shouldn't be going into uni with a, a degree in hand embroidery. You're going in with, I can do design. Like, I even had life drawing in line. Like, you, you just go in with, I can design. And hopefully from that, I will then be able to design my own embroidery. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I looked at it. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important to sort of see portfolios that, are really you know sort of inquiring and and sort of hungry for that sort of creative journey and you know if, if that that comes through and that's why the, the interview is such an important part of that process because yeah. we get to meet you and you get to showcase your work to us <laughs> thanks lucy thank you uh so i have another question and it's um about the pandemic um how is the university currently running through lockdown are mm -hmm. students taught online? Similarly, come September 2021, what will happen regarding physically attending the course if COVID is still so prominent? Okay, so yes, we, we have adapted um, to the, our delivery. And so yes, we are, we're running what is called blended delivery. So there is, all of our studios are open and all of our studio spaces are socially distanced. So our students can attend and study on site. Um, there is a number of our sort of lectures that are being sort of delivered online and also some tutorials online as well. So we really are sort of have a, you know, uh, that sort of blended delivery. And I think it's important really to sort of think about hand embroidery as part of a pandemic and that actually it's incredibly therapeutic but also it's very transferable as well so you know our students if they do need to work from home which they did in the first lockdown then that is you know more transportable than if you're studying ceramics or glass or something like that so you know they're very you know our students very adaptable in those circumstances and we hope that come 2021 that, you know, we will be able to be all on site together fully. Um, but we do recognise that um, if current situations um, continue, then this blended delivery approach will actually continue for that next academic year. Yes, yes. Well, we have adapted extremely quickly across all of our courses, haven't we? So um, mm -hmm. thanks to the tutors. Um, and to all of the staff who have adapted to 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 be able also, to teach and also our students you know just the amazing sort of support that we've had from from our yeah. students and and they've sort of learnt with us and probably told us how to do certain things at certain <laughs> points as well so yes so thanks holly for earlier on <laughs> Well, yeah. I just will check one more time. I think I don't think we've got any other questions coming in. No, we haven't. So um, I'll leave it with you, Angie. Thank you. Thanks. Say yeah. you. Okay, everybody. So can I say a huge thank you to all all of you that have joined us today? Um, thank you to Erin, Holly, and Lucy who've given you their sort of pearls of wisdom there in terms of their experience on the course. And, you know, they're, they're in the start of their third year and we're hugely sort of proud of them and also hugely excited in terms of their collections. And, you know, they're going to be, they're on, they were on the slides there from first year. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to putting their final collections on my next PowerPoint presentation when I update it. So um, just to say thank you to everybody for joining us. And, you know, we do hope to see you either online or in person as soon as we are all safe and able to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>